Hello friends and welcome to Roar Church Texarkana. If you want more information about anything that we do, go to jojodawson.net. You can find our YouTube videos, our blogs, where to sow, how to partner with us, any of that information. We hope that you enjoy this message. So Mr. Jerry, come on up friend. It's going to be good today. And I encourage you, take notes, pull out your phone or get you a pad and pen and take you some notes today. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, a lot of times when we get to praying and we are seeking God and asking God, you know, about the body of Christ and what's to take place and what we're to do and what's, what he wants. And I was a praying and I was seeking God and God's told me, he said, the problem with my church, that's not just here, it's all over. He said, the problem with my church is, is he said, they got the grave clothes on. And I thought, grave clothes? I thought, my goodness, what, how do they do that? What's happening? What's taking place in their life that they would have the grave clothes on? And God said they've been thinking about the past, the former things. And he said they don't need to be thinking about that. They need to be thinking about the now and the future because that's dead and gone. You've been set free from it. When you receive Jesus, your past is totally gone. But the devil wants to remind us of our past a lot of times and when we do think on those things because the Bible says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he so what happens when you start thinking about these things you start reliving those things and God said I don't want you to relive them no more I want you to let them go because it's behind you and I have forgiven you and I have set you free from those things you hear what I'm saying when you read the word of God you'll find out how fast and quick that you start getting built up on the Word of God because your faith starts arising and you start believing the God for what He said in His Word and therefore you can become that person that God says you are. The Bible says that we're His offspring. And in the book of Acts, it's, if you want to know where that's at, it's where God says, in Him we live and move and have our being as the prophet saith, you are his offspring, the offspring of God. So the poet said, not the prophet, the poet said. So therefore, we want, we want to know that we are his offspring. We were created in his image after his likeness. And the devil doesn't want you and I to know what, who we are in Christ, that we're to be more like God. We look like God because we was made in his image, his likeness. So therefore, we know that we were translated out of darkness into his marvelous light so that we could serve him and be with him. Amen? Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. The old you has passed away. It's dead and gone. You can't, you don't need to be trying to go back there because the devil wants to put these grave clothes on you, get you to thinking these things so it will hinder you in your walk with God. And the thing of it is, it will hold you back, keeping you from progressing and going on with God. And you don't want anything in your life or in mine to hold us back so that we won't progress and go forward with the things that God has for us. Amen? We want to go forward. I want to, I want to read you something here. Uh, it's, my, it's Micah 7, 19. It says, He will subdue our, our iniquities, and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. God will do that for you. When you repent of something, when you make a mistake, when you say, oh, God, forgive me, I didn't mean to do that, God forgives you instantly right then. And the devil doesn't want you to know and realize that God forgives you and forgets as far as the east is to the west. When you read the Word of God, you know what the Word says. You instantly say, okay, God, I know that what you said, did you forgive? And you are just to forgive us of all of our sins, all of our shortcomings, all of our iniquities, so that I can go forward with you. You don't want those grave clothes because those grave clothes stink. Amen? Amen. What happened to Lazarus? He died. Jesus came. He loved him. He came up to the grave where he was at. They showed him where it was at. They rolled the stone away. 
and he said, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible says that he came out bound with grave clothes, foot and hand, and a napkin over it. So he couldn't see where he was going, and he couldn't effectively do what he needed to do. So Jesus says, loose him and let him go. So when he, they loosed him and they let him go, he was able to go forth and to serve God and to live for God because he totally came out of darkness. And then he finally came out into the light to where he needed to be because Jesus is the light. He came to light all men. Amen? That's what he came to do so that you and I can live. Let's look at uh, blind Barnabas. Here he is. He's sitting by the roadside begging. He hears of Jesus. Jesus is coming. He cries out and says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. He kept calling. They said, be quiet. You, you don't need to be saying that. But he said it the more. And I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't hurt to say God's word more and more and more. Amen. He kept saying it. After a while, he got Jesus' attention. And what did Jesus do? He stopped and he bid him to come. They said, the master is calling you. The first thing he did, he threw off that coat that, that he had on. Because back then, a blind beggar would have a certain coat on so that they could identify him knowing who he is. So the first thing he did, he threw that off and he came to Jesus. That's what we need to do. We need to throw everything off and come to him with our whole heart. Amen. And he came to him, and Jesus says, what do you want of me? He said, that I might receive my sight. Jesus told him, says, your faith hath made you whole. Go. And and instantly he received his sight. And what did he do? The Bible says he went in the way and followed Jesus. That is exactly what we need to do. We need to keep those grave clothes off. We don't want anything to identify us with the world. Amen? Amen. What is 1 Peter? Uh, Let me read you a a scripture here real quick. I made all these notes, and you know, sometimes it's hard to go by them notes, you know? (laughs) Sometimes you just keep going, going. It says in uh, 1 Peter, it says, uh, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Well, what makes you so peculiar? You're not like the world. What did you come in here to do today? You raised your hands, you praised God, you rejoiced, you magnified him, you lifted him up, you danced, some of you danced before God. That's normal. But to the world, you're peculiar. You believe God, you trust God, you do what God tells you to do, you're still peculiar to the world. God called you out. He called you by your name. That's why you're sitting here today, because God wants to do a great and fast work in you, because that time is getting short. We're on the threshold of his coming. Amen? And God has got people lined up to do things for him like never before. But you're a peculiar people. That you should show forth the praises of him. You're praising him, aren't you? You worship him. You're glorifying him. That's what we come to do. We magnify him. Who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You have been called out. You have been summoned. And God has called you here to, for you to be the person that he's called you to be. He wants you to be. He desires you to be. I remember one time... Uh, many years ago, there was this couple in this church, and uh, I, I'm going to say denomination, but maybe I shouldn't say that, but I'm going to say it anyway, because that's what they came out of. And uh, God has spoke to them and told them to come to a church like this, an independent. And he, uh, they went, and they went in there, and they saw people raising their hands, praising God, dancing, glorifying Him. The people in this singing the songs, didn't stand there still like a board, but they were moving and they were dancing, they were praising God, they were enjoying what they were doing, and they thought, well, you know, maybe we miss God. Maybe he didn't call us out to freedom and liberty like we think he did, but yet God had spoke to them and told them that you need to go to this place because this is where I want you, this is where I plant you. Those that are planted by the rivers of water, 
Amen. Are going to bear much fruit. Amen. We want to be where the, the Holy Spirit's flowing, where the Holy Spirit has got freedom to do what he wants to do. And God wants you to know that he's, he wants you to have the freedom and the liberty to serve him and not be bound by tradition or man's doctrine. Amen. Well, they, they decided one day, well, maybe this isn't for us and maybe we shouldn't we shouldn't go to this church. And so what they did is they returned back to the church they were in. When you stop and look at it, when the church they were in, they wasn't taught to live by faith. They wasn't taught to lay hands on the sick. They wasn't taught to speak in tongues. They wasn't taught to cast out devils. They, didn't, they wasn't taught that they could have a ministry and do things for God. And that they wasn't taught that the Spirit of God comes upon them to anoint them to preach the gospel. They wasn't taught all of that, but when they went into this independent church, they started teaching them. They started telling them, you can do this. You can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. You don't have to live the way you did. You don't have to do, get those grave clothes on and start thinking about all these things that you once did and all, but you have renewed your mind by the word of God. And what we do is we have to renew our mind daily of the Word of God, because the old nature, the old you, is going to want to try to creep up and try to cause you to stumble and fall. And the devil knows that, because the three things he used on Eve in the garden and used on Jesus was, a, was the pride of life, the lust of the eye, and I forgot the last one. <laughs> It's the lust of the eye, the pride of life, and the lust of the, the lust of the flesh. Thank you. Praise God. There's the three things the devil wants to try to use against you to try to cause you to stumble and fall. And that's something that we have to realize that we can't allow these things to happen in our life that the devil tries to do because we're no longer in the kingdom of darkness. We're in God's marvelous light, so we need to hear what the Spirit of God is saying and not what everything else is saying around about us. I remember when I was going and I was new in this and I was coming up and I was in a, a church and all of a sudden one day I was in prayer and I, I prayed this prayer. I said, God, I want everything you have for me in this life. And all of a sudden, next week, I started getting this unction inside of me, wanting to leave where I was at and go into where God wanted me to go. And I got to thinking, well, God's got more for me. He does have more. I didn't know I was going to pray that, but it just came out of me. And I look back on it, and I know it was the Holy Spirit that was doing that. So I, I left the church. The pastor told me I, I wasn't supposed to go. You can't do that. He says, what about all the money you gave? I said, well, that's God's. That's not mine. I said, you know, I gave it to God. I said, once it left my hand, that's it. It's no longer mine. So the thing of it is, is people will use things, and they will say things to you to try to keep you bound in bondage and not, keep you, not want you to go and be in the freedom and the liberty of what God has for you. Many of you here are called and have a ministry that God has for you, but you will never walk in it unless you say yes to God and say, okay, here I am, Lord. Use me. I'm available. I want you to use me. And that's what you need to say to God because the devil wants to try to bring all these things back and put them on you and try to get you to think about the wrong thing. I want to read you something here. It says, God puts our mistakes under the blood when we ask him to. Not only that, he said that he hides our sins in the depths of the sea. Remember we just read that in Micah. So why do you want to go fishing for some of these things hidden in the sea of God's forgetfulness, things that can affect your faith and hinder you from being an effective minister of the gospel if you get to thinking about them. We're not to think about the past, the things that we once did or once happened and once taken place. Maybe you did make a mistake. So what? You know, God knows you're human. God will forgive you. He will set your feet on the right path. His, his word, it says in his word that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. 
So therefore, when we keep our eyes focused on what the Word has to say, you and I can do what God says we can do. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You need to confess God's Word every time that you can, it, it just rises up in you and you think about it and you quote it and you confess it. Um, I said that when it comes up, I want to share something. We went to, we was going to Mexico and we used to go every month to Mexico down there to minister and we got down there and we got food poisoning. And uh, we came back and, you know, I was confessing every scripture of healing that I could think of. Man, I was just thinking, God, some, you know, your word works. I don't understand because we were throwing up. We couldn't, we were weak. We couldn't hardly do anything. We were laying down. We, I mean, the whole bunch of us. We, I mean, we were totally sick. And uh, I went in the bathroom to throw up again. And all of a sudden, it came up out of my bed. It came from down in here. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And when I heard that, I spoke it out. I gave life to it. And when I gave life to it, all of a sudden I was instantly healed. But you see, I knew the word works. I knew God had something for me, and I had to believe and trust God that these things was, would happen. In Galatians, it's, uh, Paul's talking, he says, But now after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, I turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements, Whereunto you desire again to be in bondage. And I, I looked up uh, some things, and it says to, uh, or it, to be enslaved to. We don't want to be enslaved to anything. We want to be free in, in, in the Lord God. Amen. I'm going to read you another scripture in Philippians. He says, Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. You see, we want to keep our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. The, we want to run that race. You know, when I was in school, we, had a, we run track. And uh, the key to it was we wanted to come in first place. We wanted to cross that finish line. But I noticed that if we didn't stay focused on what we were doing and we didn't keep our eyes on that finish line, we would mess up. We couldn't look back because if we're running and we look back, we're liable to stumble and fall. You hear what I'm saying? The, but Jesus says the blind will lead the, the blind who leads the blind will fall, both fall in the ditch. So therefore I realized that I can't be looking back into the things that once was, but I have to look ahead to the prize of the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Because I can't you know, the old man's done gone. He's dead and gone. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. We're a new creature, are you not? You can do the things that God called you to do when you look unto him and keep your eyes on Jesus. What did Peter do? They was out in the boat. The winds was blowing. The waves was uh, tossing them to and fro. And then all of a sudden, here comes Jesus walking on the water. Well, they all get fearful thinking it's the Spirit. And Jesus... Of course, Peter, he's bold. He says, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. And Jesus says, come. A lot of times in the ministry, you think, I'm going to step out of the ministry when it's better, when I got plenty of money, when I can do this, I can do that. I don't have to worry about anything. Let me tell you something. God will call you out into the troubled times, whether you realize it or not. Just because things look bad right now with what's going on in the earth in the United States, especially what's happening. I'm telling you, you can still step out and you can still do the things you're called to do. But Peter, he stepped out on the water when the waves were soaring, when the wind was blowing. But the key that he did was when he walked out on the water is he taking his eyes off of Jesus. Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking unto who? Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. You got to step out in the ministry. You got to keep your eyes on him. You can't take your eyes off of him. Don't let yourself get distracted, but you want to keep your eyes 
on Jesus and stay focused in everything that you do that he tells you you do. If he tells you you can have something, you can have it. If he tells you you can do something, you can do it. You don't have to sit back and say, well, that's okay for them. That's what they're to call to do. Let me tell you something. You're called to soar like an eagle, just like they are. Amen? I want to tell you a little story. There was this mama eagle, and she had two baby eagles, and they was on the side of a cliff, and they was in the nest, and she was coming every day. She was feeding them. See, that's just like us sometimes when we come to church. We come to church to be what? Fed. Did we not? We want to be fed. And here they are, they're being fed each day, and all, they're looking at all these other eagles. They're flying around, they're soaring, and man, they're just, you know, having a good time in the heavenlies. And uh, so when it came time for them to leave the nest, one of them, he caught the vision, and he soared. The other one, they, he had been fighting for the food. He had been wanting all the food for himself, and he got so big and fat, he fell. He didn't soar. And his mama eagle had to go down and pick him up and put him back in the nest and mend him until he got where he could soar. So one day, as he was still there, after he mended, what happened to him was he caught the vision. He realized that he could soar too. And so he left the nest and he soared. And see, that's the way it is sometimes that we in the church we're like those little eagles. God wants us to soar, and he wants us to accomplish and do what he called us to do. But we can't be looking back. we got to be looking ahead. We can soar. And God wouldn't have called you out to do anything for him if you could not soar like those eagles. Amen? Amen. Because you can. You can do all things through Christ. Isaiah 43, 18 says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. That's why we are to consider all the things that God is doing in our life today, and we don't look back, but we look forward to the mark of the prize of high calling in Christ Jesus. I like what Paul said in Timothy. He said, I have fought the good fight. We are in a battle, are we not? He said, I fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. By faith can you soar. By faith can you go into the ministry. By faith can you do the things that God's called you to do. You can do them. Amen. Let's look at uh, back in uh, Numbers, the 14th chapter. You can read it. I'm going to paraphrase it for you. Here it is. They come up to the spies. They went into the land. They spied. They came back, and they gave them a report that it is truly a land flowing with milk and honey. And, that, you know, boy, this is a good land. This is the land that God's going to give us, and we can have it. But then there was some that gave a bad report and said, oh, but we're like grasshoppers in their sight. So they give that bad report. And so in verse 1, it says the... the uh, Children of Israel, they started murmuring and complaining, and they wanted to uh, uh, go back into the uh, uh, captivity, into slavery where they was at. And they murmured against Aaron and uh, Moses. And they said, well, let us take up a, and get us a captain and let us go back. And, you know, I've seen so many people do that same thing. They wanted to go back. They didn't want the freedom and the liberty that God has for them. And that's why we have to realize they, didn't, they kept thinking about their past. They're thinking about, oh, it would be better back there. Should we come out here in the wilderness and should we die? Should our, should our wives and children be murdered? But you see, God, he had a plan, and he already told Moses, he said, I give them that land. And I like the one good report says, they're a bread for us, for their protection is gone. You see? But they couldn't see that. They couldn't, they, they couldn't do that. And Moses, he stood and he prayed for the people, and God told Moses, he came down and told him, he said, Moses, he said, how long am I going to have to be with these people? Out of all the signs and wonders that I did for them and brought them out of bitter bondage, here they are wanting to go back. You see, that's what happens. The devil wants you to go back 
to your past, go back to what you's doing, go back to th doing the same things you once did before you came into his marvelous light because he wants you to be to stop you in your tracks. He wants to hinder you. He wants to keep you from doing the work of the ministry. He wants to keep you in bondage. He doesn't want you to have the freedom and liberty that you have here. He does not like that. He doesn't like what the church is doing, but I'm telling you that the church is about to soar like those eagles. They're about to accomplish things for God like never before. And it doesn't matter what the news people say or what they think. It doesn't matter if they want to try to say, well, when they crossed that Red Sea, it was only two inches deep. I don't care what they say. That was a big sea. And I'm going to tell you something. God can take everything in your path and cause it to go away and cause you to walk through that water just like they did. God can do that for you. God does not want you to sit back and think that you can't do this and you can't do that. That's the devil thinking, putting that thoughts in your mind. God's going to take and he's going to enlarge you. He's going to enlarge you. Get to thinking big. When you was up there praising and worship, God spoke to me and said, he's going to enlarge you. It's time to be enlarged. It's time to break out and go forth and do what God has called you to do. In Numbers 23, 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and hath, shall he not make it, make it good? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not do it? God is going to do what he said he would do in mine and your life. We have got to realize that when we get a vision, like those eagles, when we get a vision, we can go with it. We can run with it. It is for an appointed time, but I'm telling you, the appointed time is coming, and it's this year. We need to prepare and get our re ourselves ready, get that vision Write it down, hold on to it, because God is going to have many of you step out this year and do the work of the ministry so that you can do the great and mighty things, so that you can have signs, wonders, and miracles following you everywhere you go. God wants that. <coughs> He'll have you in the supermarket praying for people. When we was living in Tulsa, I remember many times I'd go in there and God would tell me, I want you to go over and pray for this person. I want to heal him. I'd go over and pray for him. I'd tell him, I said, you know, I don't, you, you don't know me, but God told me you needed healing in your body. I want to pray for you. And they said, oh, okay. And then I was right in front of the super, the, the, where the meat was, and this woman was over there, and God said, go over and pray for her. So you can't be ashamed of the gospel. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't be ashamed of it. We have to step out by faith and do what he tells us to do. And I went over and prayed for her, and this guy, he was putting the meat out right in front of us, and I started praying for her, and he just stopped. See, it didn't matter where he thought it was right or not. I didn't ask him his opinion if I could do it or not. God said to do it. See, when God tells you to do it, you do it. I remember one time we, was in, we lived in Liberty, and my wife worked at uh, Kmart, and I was sitting there waiting for her to get off, and this woman came in with this wheelchair, and she's sitting over there. I looked at her, and God said, I want you to go over and pray for her because I want to heal her. I said, okay. So I went over, and I said, can I pray for her? She said, yeah, you can pray for me. So I prayed for her, and I said, you know, God's healed you now. She said, oh, yeah, I know. She says, many people have prayed for me. You know what she done? She, she thought about all those times people prayed for her, and she didn't get up. And that was her time, that was her hour and her day to get up out of that wheelchair and walk. All she had to do was to receive what God did for her then, and she would have got up and walked. Amen? The guy at the gate of beautiful. What did Peter say? Silver or gold have I none, but such as I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he grabbed him by the hand and he walked. You see, that's the thing of we got to be in these last days. We got to have that boldness. We got to have the faith to step out and do what God tells us to do. <coughs> Whether they receive it or not, it doesn't matter. You're obedient to God. But you're going to come along and there's going to be some that's going to say, yes, I'll receive that. And they're going to be totally healed. God told me today that there's some of you here that need healing in your body. And while you're sitting here, he said, I'm healing them. 
I'm touching them. So whatever you need it done in your body, if you'll check yourself, you're going to find out God's already touched you. See, God didn't make it hard to receive healing. He didn't make it hard to get saved. He made it simple. He made it easy. Jesus said, I'm the truth, the life, and the way. No one comes to the Father but by me. So guess what? You can receive him anywhere. When I received him, it was just real simple, real easy. wasn't hard. God didn't make it complicated. He made it so easy that, you know, people don't realize how easy it is. A lot of people think they got to go through some kind of ritual to get reborn again, but you don't. All you got to do is say, oh, here I am, Lord. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. I accept you, Jesus, into my life. It's that simple. You can get saved. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Jesus said this in Luke 9, 12. He says, And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. We got to put God's kingdom first. We got to keep focus. We, we don't look back. Just like I told you about the running that race, if we look back, we would have but stumbled and we wouldn't have never made it where God wanted us to, to go. In uh, Hebrews 12, 1, Paul says here, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a wit cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight. That weight could be an offense. That weight could be a grave clothes. That weight could be most anything that would hinder you keeping you from accomplishing what God had called you to do in your life. Amen? We don't want to put them grave clothes on. And the sin, that sin is unbelief. It says that in Romans 14, 23, that which is not of faith is sin. If you eat of doubt, it's sin. I remember, I remember there was this uh, group of pastors and they was asking Norval Hayes, why is it that the things are not working the way they ought to work in our church? And he says it's because of the sin. And they, man, they got all upset because he told them it was a sin. He says, he quoted that scripture to them. Let me tell you something, we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk according to what God said. We get our faith out there believing and trusting him that he can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. You can do those things. You're a can-do person. You're a king, whether you realize it or not. We're called king and priest. We can do things for God like never before. We just got to get it in here so to get down to here so that we can walk it out and do what God said to do. Amen? But after he had told them that and showed them that scripture, guess what? Their church taken off. They didn't, they didn't walk in doubt and unbelief no more. They walked in faith. And you see, that's where it's at. Without faith, it's impossible to please them. I know I'm speaking on faith here, but I'm telling you, faith is what's going to cause you to soar and cause you to do the things God wants you to do because you're believing in him, because you're putting your eyes on him, because he is truly the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen? He says, what, And the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. What is the race that God has for you? What is the job that he's been putting in your spirit? What he's been saying to you that you are to do? Sometimes you can have just a thought and that be of God. Sometimes God can speak to you or somebody can prophesy to you. God wants you to fulfill those dreams and those visions that you have. There's some of you here that you have some dreams and visions that you hadn't told nobody about, and that's a good thing. I was in a church one time, this guy, God spoke to him. I mean, he spent time with God, and he went to the pastor, and he told the pastor, he said, this is what God has told me. The pastor told him. He gave him good counsel. He says, don't go tell nobody. Well, he left there. And next thing you know, he was telling everybody. And everybody was laughing at him and saying, well, you can't do that. You know it's impossible. There's no way you can do that. Who do you think you are? 
And next thing you know, he wasn't doing what God told him to do because he let people talk him out of it. When you confide in the pastor and he gives you good counsel, hold on to it. Do what you're to do. Be slow to speak, but just keep on thinking on these things, which is good, pure, honest, and a good report. That's what you're to think on. You're to think on God's holy word. What does his word say? What does his word tell you? What is his word doing in your life? Are you allowing the word of God to grow in your heart? Have you got the good ground that when you put that seed in there, because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is a substance, the ingredients, the thing that you have need of. What does a farmer do when he plows? He breaks up that fallow ground. He prepares it. He puts fertilizer in it. We, the same way with us, we put that faith in there, and then we plant the Word of God in there. Jesus says the Word is like a seed that's planted. He gave them four types of ground. I won't go into that, but he gave them four types of ground. But the last one was a good ground, good, pure heart. And that's what God wants the Word of God to go into us every day so that we can allow that Word to manifest and to grow so that we will hold on to it. And the devil can't steal it. Remember, he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. The Bible says, diligently guard your heart, for out of it are the what? Issues of life. Life comes from out of the heart. The mouth speaketh what's in the heart. And that's what God wants for each and every one of us to speak and to say, not to look back and say what we once were, but let's say what we, God says we are and what we can do. Because there are, I, I don't know about you, but years God helped me back, okay? But no more can he hold me back. The devil's not going to hold me back. God says we can go forth. God says we can do all things. God says we can. His, his answer is yes and amen for what he has for us. That we don't look back no more. But yet the church is to get that vision, look ahead, keeping your eyes focused on the true one, Jesus Christ. Are you glad that you came today? Are you glad that God has spoken to you in his word? See, I can say a lot of things, but uh, while you're sitting there, God can do things. There was somebody here earlier, their heart was being dealt with. God was dealing with your heart. He was during praise and worship, and he was doing things in your heart, preparing your heart. And don't, don't push it aside what he did. Don't allow yourself to say, well, you know, that was just, it was just a good time in praise and worship. God has done something in your hearts. Every time you come in here, you come in here expecting God to do something in your life and those around you. I can't do it, but the Holy Spirit can do it. Amen. Amen? Praise and worship prepares you for the work that God wants to do in you, and you can allow him to do that work in you. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God has some things for some of you here. I just don't want to get ahead of God, okay? Is that all right? I just want to be obedient to him because I believe he has some things he wants to say to many people. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you're saying. We thank you that you're ministering to your people because your people are blessed. Your people are the best. Your people are good. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name.